Psalms 131, a song of degrees of David. Now David being the, the second king over the land of Israel, it had not been divided yet. There was no north and there was no south. There was all union together. It split on the Rehoboam. Being the king, Lord, my heart is not haunting. That's pride and the opinion of oneself. His heart. Again, it's the heart of man. And in David's heart, that, that Romans says that you're to believe in Jesus Christ for righteousness. David was not proud. He didn't think himself to be, oh, you know, look at me. I'm the king and I'm Mr. High and everybody has to listen to me. He wasn't like that. Nor my eyes lofty. Lofty, you think of a loft. It's the top room of a house. Again, it's, it's a reference to pride and, you know, look at me. And yet, that's what we see today. And not only as a leadership of this country, but in leaderships of businesses. There are men who are in charge of a house and they're proud in their opinion of oneself. And their loftiness is, you know, I'm the boss. You know, I, and then the government, we rule you. That wasn't David. And that is not to be the Christian. Pride is never of God. God never says, I'm proud of you. God said to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, thou my beloved son. I am well pleased. Never, I'm not, doesn't say I'm proud of you, son. Never. He says to the Christian, uh, that, oh, wait. He says, uh, when he's talking about, he gives them the cities, he says, I am, I am, uh, take on the ten cities. Well done. I believe it is. And you are to learn that lesson. If you are a Bible-believing Christian, you are not to have your children be raised. Oh, I'm proud of you, my son. The proper Bible term is well done. And yet you see pride and haunty and loftiness in our sports. And look where the sports have gone. Drugs. Arrests. Murder, criminal, jail. Their lives are totally wasted. You ever ask yourself when when, he, when these guys get their their million and billion dollar contracts, why do they got to get another one next to? What do they do with their money? It's bought on foolish and lusty things because of pride. Neither do I exercise, use, practice, work, or labor myself in great matters or in things too high for me. David was not one of those men of Greece and Athens, you know, who the big thing and search out the big matter and. and David dealt with things in his life that he knew and what he understood about. David sought the Lord. And he was king. So it means as a king, Solomon was given an instance by two harlots. One had given her baby for an appetite, and the other one had hid the baby. And they didn't know who that baby was. One wasn't giving the appetite. That was another story. Hold on.
One baby died in the middle of the night. And it was unknown who the live baby belonged to. That's the one under Solomon. Now that would be a great matter. And that would be a thing too high for me, for David. So what do you do? You turn to God. And you seek God for answers. And not being prideful or lofty, you would give God the credit for the sentence that he applied to find out who was the mother of that child. David would turn things over to people who would better handle the job than himself. If David did not know how to do something, he found somebody who knew how to do it and let him do the job. In other words, David was, and I don't mean low cost kind of person, I mean he was a simple man. He delegated authority to where it needed to be done and who, who was to be put in charge by knowing what to do. Surely, I have behaved and quiet myself. Quiet himself. He didn't talk too much. As a child that is weaned of his mother. Now, a child before he's weaned, he, he's screaming. He's hungry. And as soon as he gets the milk, he's quiet. So David is saying, I'm quiet myself. I'm at peace. I'm being nourished. I'm being supplied the need that I have. My soul is even as a weaned child. He's wholly depend upon God by natural milk. Desire the sincere milk of the word, the Bible says. So he's not too high for God. He's not too proud for God. He's not to get into things he can't involve in. He turns them over to the Lord and he's quieted. He's at rest. He's given a natural element that God can provide. When he turns from God and does his own thing and lifts up his authority as I am the king, bring that woman into my chambers. Then you are in trouble. As David here is not prideful. He's not lofty. He has no pride. He has no big opinion of himself. Read his prayer when he repents of his sin to God. He doesn't boast. That one guy there, he goes up there and he says, Lord, I thank you I'm not as that guy right there. I don't do this. I do this. Look at that guy over there, Lord. Look at him. That's pride and that's loftiness. <laughs> and boy, I've met some men in the pulpit like that. But with a me and quiet spirit just feeding on God. And what he's saying is, God, if you want me to know it, you'll show it me and you'll bring to me or I will go find what I need to know. Other than that, if I don't need to know it, oh well. And with that, those two verses, he turns to the nation and says, Let Israel hope in the Lord. What is the hope? 
that God will provide for them everything they need. They will not look upon, you know, we're the Lord's elect. And that they'll be at peace, feeding upon God as a child with a mother. And I believe God says a land flowing with milk and honey. So what is the expression today? Got milk? You know who provides the milk? It's God. He gave the female, the mother, the, the resources to give to a child when a child has no teeth. Enzymes and bacteria fighting nourishments that are that is in the mother's milk. That quiet child as he nurses. And yet today they're so worried about women breastfeeding in the public. Well, you got women with their boobs hanging out in, in other public places. What's the problem? You know, it gets me, uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I, if I get it off my chest now, man, it's amazing how man will see the eyes of something that God made for a baby. But yet the Bible says, let her breast satisfy thee at all times. God gave the woman for nourishment for the baby and pleasure for the husband. So you're looking here as nourishment and pleasure, and he turns to Israel and says, you hope in the Lord like that. You want to have nourishment, you go to God and be weaned of God. You want to have pleasure, you go to God and get you find out what God's pleasure is. And I don't think it's the foolishness that I've seen in vacation Bibles and all that around. And he says, let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth, right now. You may not have done it, but start right now and forever. The king of the nation is looking out for the subjects of the land. And if they're not to him subjects, they are his family. And he's speaking to him as fatherly. He's not this big, high, lofty person. He's saying, Israel, be like me. Well, isn't that pride and haughtiness to say that? Did Paul say, be ye followers of me? See, if you want to follow somebody, Their life better be dedicated to God. And even the life of Paul. David, yeah, that big adulterous sin. You know, Paul told the Holy Spirit, no, I'm going to Jerusalem. Three times, four times. It is recorded in the Bible that, that the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul. The Holy Spirit used men and women to tell Paul, don't go. And Paul says, I'm going. See, you learn we're all sinners. But you find somebody whose heart is given to God. 
And you overlook their sins because, listen, they love the Lord and do it right. They have a prayer like David and they contrite heart and, and, a bro, a, and a broken spirit. They confess their sins honestly to God and God has washed them. And you follow them. David saying, listen, follow me in my steps, Israel. David's not this big, high, mighty king. He loves the people, and this is godly advice to the nation. Not to be prideful. Listen, listen, in America, pro I'm proud to be American. Made in America. Uh, our team pride and those big number one hands and, and you know, that is anti-Bible. That is satanic. Your eyes are not to be lofty, looking up to high things. Oh, if I put money into, into the market, it's going to get bigger and bigger. And, and that's, not, that's loftiness. Just settle in and rest in the Lord like a child with his mother. For nourishment. And be always a child. Suffer the little children to come unto me, Jesus said. He says another place, he says, unless you be like little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And then Israel, you do what I do. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great Thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great